Attention. This is the artificial womb facility. A place where humans could be grown entirely from scratch. The devices you see here are called growth pods. Each growth pod is designed to replicate the same conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. Growth pods are designed to host human fetuses until they are fully developed. These artificial wombs are designed to help premature babies to continue developing after their birth. But emerging scientific research is making it possible to use them to create designer humans entirely from scratch. In terms of design, the artificial womb consists of the growth chamber which hosts the fetus. It replicates the same environment provided by the mother's uterus. It is the incubation chamber that provides the optimal temperature and humidity for the growth of the fetus. There is another container which provides the fetus with the constant stream of blood that is rich of oxygen until the moment of birth. The artificial womb is filled with the amniotic fluid, which is the liquid that surrounds the fetus inside the mother's uterus. This liquid is rich of the essential nutrients that are needed to sustain the unborn fetus inside the womb. The growth chamber also features advanced sensors coupled with artificial intelligence. These sensors monitor the fetus's vital signs during the development process which include breathing and heartbeat. The artificial womb also features a screen which displays real-time data on the development progress of the fetus. Inside this growth pod, the fetus is kept for nine months until a full course of development is reached. The concept of growing babies inside an artificial environment is called ectogenesis. Ecto means outside and genesis means formation. And it isn't really new. The history of the artificial womb dates back to the early 1950s. The first design of the artificial womb was patented by Emanuel Greenberg back in 1955. He developed the concept with the hope of helping premature babies to continue developing after their birth. Back then, baby incubators already existed, so no one really moved forward to building the prototype of the artificial womb. In the 1990s, researchers at Tokyo University's medical department tested the artificial womb to see if it actually works. They removed a goat fetus from its mother by C-section. Then they placed it in a rubber womb filled with artificial amniotic fluid. And the little guy was delivered 17 days later. In 2002, scientists built mini artificial wombs using cells extracted from the uterus itself. These lab-made wombs allowed embryos to attach themselves to their walls just like the natural process. Even though the embryos began to grow and develop, they were terminated five days later due to ethical concerns. In 2017, scientists from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia managed to use a primitive design of the artificial womb where they placed a premature lamp fetus. After keeping the lamb fetus for four weeks inside the artificial womb, it started growing a wool coat, gained weight, and even opened its eyes. The researchers went on to test their design of the artificial womb with more lamps, and their experiments were successful. As of today, the real artificial womb is no more than just a plastic bag filled with amniotic fluid. It doesn't look like much, but it serves its purpose. 
allowing premature fetuses to continue developing outside the mother's uterus. Even though the primary goal of the artificial womb is to sustain premature babies, it could actually be used to create the perfect human being. By engineering a human being from scratch, we can redesign ourselves to be more resistant to diseases and to achieve more intelligence and better looks. And babies who are born in such a way are called designer babies or designer humans because they have been customized and designed by another human being before their birth. To create the perfect designer baby from scratch, you don't need something sophisticated actually. All you need is just a skin cell. <laughs>